Now, this weekend saw parts of the UK reach record high temperatures, but it wasn't just the weather hitting the top of the scales as the UK recorded the highest daily number of migrants arriving on our shores this year. Yes, my friends, on Sunday, whilst you're struggling, 616 people crossed the channel, and as conditions were sea and calm, it was wonderful, because that followed 154 on Saturday, so that was 800 people at the weekend. The question is, is it a blip? Or does Dishi Rishi need to be stricter on stopping the boats and the numbers from rising? We're back to the hot desk. Can somebody please... You just said something very interesting. Th he can't stop it, can he? No. He can't, Alex. No. It's just a headline. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Unless he, unless he actually has the cojones to do something pretty radical, which I think we can all say that doesn't seem like... We if he had the cojones, cojones, what does he need to do he? radically you in Europe? You have to turn back boats. It's the only way. It's what Australia did. You have to turn back boats and say to France, this is your problem. They're coming from your territory and I'm you're sorry. a third country. It is one of the only ways you have to leave the ECHR. You need to speed up deportations. I mean, the fact you've got 200,000 people languishing in hotels is just utterly insane. Um, I mean, there's so many things he has to do, but he's only doing about... So if, he, so if, he, if that's the, the case, why doesn't he do it? Why are you looking to shop? Uh, turning back boats is an extremely dangerous thing to do. I mean, to have the RNLI or other, you know, the Navy perhaps saving people from boats and taking them on board is one thing, but to turn them around, you're increasing the chance of not just, as you would say, economic migrants coming over, but families, women with children who will drown. And or Albanian are... men who throw their passports yes, away. Yes, but not all They're of not them. And it's all. really, really important that we don't just use this blanket term of migrants. There's also people who are fleeing war, people who do not have safe routes into this country, have every legal right to 25 be 25%, we did it last night, of the people arriving recently before the Alba were Albanian men. Yes, but well, what about... Who are criminals, facts. The next and biggest that's fine. right now is from India. And actually, something that no-one's talking about is the extremist connections of some of these men coming over from rural Punjab connected to extremist organisations in the UK that are running a lot of the illicit drugs trade right now. This is not being spoken about, and this is why that number is surging. They're coming illegally, flying into Serbia, where they then get into the EU, getting across to the Channel. These are not people fleeing war. These are people attached to some very dangerous okay. organisations. So taking that point, um, in which case you would have to increase the amount of money that is going into processing people so that every single well, person who lands on up. our shores is processed so that genuine asylum seekers and refugees are looked after properly and people who are not, it's proven, and but, they but, are taken... But, but, but Mike, I, I agree with both of them. What is so frustrating, and people, when I finish the show every night, say, you've talked about immigration, Ian, just because it, all I ever hear is it's not fit for purpose, the Home Office, the processing system's a load of old rubbish. What... Let's say your party gets elected. What needs to be done straight away? She talks about cojones. What are you supposed to do to stop something which, let me tell you, you know this, North and South is doing people's heads in. It really is. Well, I'll tell you two things that could happen immediately. You could start... You could employ people in the Home Office who would process asylum claims, work out whether a claim is genuine, whether it's not. If it's genuine, they become a refugee, they get... Uh, English classes, they get to get a job, they get somewhere to live in this country, they get to contribute to our society. That's what a grown-up home office, what a grown-up government But I'm going to have do. to jump in, Mikey, because you know that the home office is full of the blob, right? We know, because we did this the other week, that the, 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 the one of the unions, the civil service union, is taking the government to court because they disagree with the Ru Rwanda policy. And I went nuts and everybody went, the Rwanda, Rwanda policy it's can't unworkable. fix it. They don't take but 200 why, people But you've back. just said, get people in the Home Office who can do the job. They should be doing what the government tells them to do. Exactly, and the government's telling them not to process claims deliberately. Why? Because they want the numbers to go up, because they Jesus. want it to be some kind of political scandal to distract from the fact that they've screwed the economy again. That's what they want to do. The other thing they need to do, they need renewed agreements with the EU. When we were in the EU, nobody came over on a small boat. You know why? They because did. they had a number of agreements. No, they didn't. No, we had a number you. of agreements with them. We only returned they 5%. Did not. Under but the EU agreement, we barely I'll tell you two things. Anybody. One, we could return people. Two, we had a, an EU-wide asylum system, which meant there was nobody if we came were, to yeah, hear you know what, if Brussels they'd already claimed in France or One at a time. Germany. One at a time. Go, Alex. If go you're on. part of an EU asylum system, then we just get allocated who's coming to the country by the EU. You've got to take this number. And actually, the other thing is, it's all very well talking about... 
it's process, a shared thing over which 28 nations, with. which is I so really much need better. To. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Actually, no, no, any country has to decide who can come into its uh, in, into its territory. Well, we're not doing that right now. Um, not, we, we, we you, what, you we want to stay about control. Said. We've lost control of the situation. I know. In 2018, zero people coming on a boat. Now we've got 80 odd thousand coming. But, you know, one of the That's because we left the EU with terrible deals. No, no. We could have left the EU, kept those agreements, then those people wouldn't be coming. people going back even when we were part of that. And if we're part of that deal, the EU would be saying, you to take all of these No one was coming on a boat. Now they're all coming on a boat. the boats have been denied asylum by all the European countries they've stopped in already. We have a far softer touch. France are basically no, we don't. We, we're not processing oh, any claims at all. We do not have a soft touch. No, when it comes to asylum processing, how do you explain how people who have had their asylum applications rejected in three countries suddenly have them granted in the UK? Well, that is the definition. When of we're in the touch. EU, they couldn't do that. If you claim somewhere in the EU, you could not come they here and claim did. again. Did. You got one Some shot in the EU. Existed no, for they decades. didn't. <laughs> I mean, oh they just gosh, didn't. It did. <laughs> I know. Right. Well, listen, they're going to. Listen, I, I, why didn't we start with this? This is going to continue. Oh. Basically, they'll go to the pub, get a cab home. Nick and I are like, whatever. <laughs> Thank you for now. The amazing Mike Buckley, Nicola Thorpe, and Alex Phillips. <laughs>